everyone. Wendy here. I survived Maryland sheep and wool. Yay. It was a great day. It was yesterday. Um, I'm still a little beat. Uh, you can see the little bags under my eyes. So that's okay. Um, I am sans glasses today, by the way, too, because there is a horrendous glare on my glasses. Uh, I'm pretty much blind without them. So if I'm going like this, um, which I'll try not to, um, that's the reason why. At least I won't be pushing my glasses up every five minutes, which I have been doing in the videos. Um, and maybe I'll be more comfortable because I can't really see myself in the video anyway because I'm really, really blind. Okay, back to sheep and wool. Um, Nitty D and I, Nitty D is my friend Christina. Um, we used to do a podcast together called Nitty D and the City, um, but it became overwhelming and um, we didn't enjoy doing it anymore. So uh, that's why in these videos when I say it's not a podcast, I really mean it. I don't, I don't have any interest in being on iTunes or you know checking my subscribers on YouTube. I'm grateful for anybody who does watch the video. That's very nice. But again, it was just really something I wanted to do to have a video component on my blog because my blog is really a form of memory keeping. And I, I think it would be nice to have a video record of my conversations with you and also what I'm doing and things like that. Um, my father passed away in January. So, you know, I've become much more aware of impermanency and things like that. So maybe it's a little bit more of an effort in my part to create, create a record, create some permanency. I don't know. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Let's get back to the wool. Anyway, Nitty D and I, uh, Christina, I call her Nitty D. Uh, she picked me up at the train station and we headed down to Maryland. We didn't have too much traffic. We made great time and that left our options open. Where to go first? Because you will recall last week I talked about the mystery yarn at Maryland Sheep and Wool, the Wulmaisa the German yarn that's impossible to get in the United States unless you stalk somebody's D-stash and Ravelry or you happen to be stalking their website at like three in the morning or whatever U.S. time they update. Anyway, um, I'm not interested in that um, just as like I'm not interested in sleeping out for tickets anymore. But anyway, um, back to the Wulmaisa. The night before Sheep and Wool, I was uh, reading the forums on Ravelry and um, the Maryland Sheep and Wool people were updating about who wasn't coming. For instance, Yarn Barn, a giant vendor, canceled at the last minute. I don't know why. Um, and they were filling those spots. But people were also talking about where can you find this? Where can you find that? Last year, it turns out that the Wulmaisa was at Vulcan's Rest, which I think is local to Maryland. I'm not positive. Oh, wait, they gave me a tote bag. Oh, wait, I lost my tote bag. It's in the house somewhere. Um, Vulcan's Rest had um, somebody's personal stash of Wulmaisa last year. Um, and it turns out one of the um, employees of uh, Vulcan's Rest said, hey, we've got it again. And they showed a basket that had maybe 20 skeins in it. So I told Nitty D the day before and she is like, you are crazy. I'm going straight to the Miss Babs. Um, but in the back of my head, I was like, I'm checking out that barn four. They were in barn four and I thought, got to walk past barn four on the way to get to Miss Babs, which is in the barn in the back. For those of you who have not been to Sheep and Wool, um, and let me, let me back up a little bit too. When I talk, I, I don't have this idea that I have this audience on YouTube that's never been to my blog. Um, but I have noticed that uh, I did have 24 views last time. Awesome. Thank you. So I make a lot of assumptions about what you know about me and what you may know about my knitting or things like that. And I apologize. Um, I really shouldn't do that. And one of the assumptions that I'm making is that you come back every year and you read my Maryland Sheep and Wool blog post and it's not a mystery to you what this is. But I'm going to try and toss assumptions aside again and uh, backtrack a bit. Maryland Sheep and Wool is a gigantic uh, sheep and wool festival that is in West Friendship, Maryland every year. It is at the uh, Howard County Fairgrounds. Is that right? <laughs> or am I getting it mixed up with Rhinebeck? Um, Howard County is Rhinebeck. That's a different story for a different day. This is just West Friendship, Maryland. They are the, uh, the fairgrounds there and I don't know what else they do there. Maybe have the West Friendship state fair there i don't know but um once a year they have a sheep and wool festival 
you walk in, you go through a midway of people who are already sitting and knitting and chatting. This year they added a little drinking there. There was a farmer's market. Um, and then you're on the main strip and the main strip are barns. Um, there's barns on each side of the strip. One side of the barns is really, um, well, it was like there's a food barn and a swag barn and things like that. And then the other side, those barns are vendors. But every vendor wants to be, I guess they do, maybe they like their little places, but they want to be in the main barn, which is in the very back as you're walking, as you're walking towards the sheepdog demonstrations. Because if you keep walking past the main barn, um, they have sheepdogs back there and they do demonstrations three times a day of how they herd sheep, which is really cool. Um, and I forgot to take a video for you. Sorry, but I did take photos, so you'll see the photos later. Anyway, um, Miss Babs is in the main barn, so you have to walk past all of the barns to get to her. So, focus, focus. That's what Nitty D wanted, but uh, Nitty D had to go to the bathroom. So while Nitty D was in the bathroom, I ran to booth four, and I think I was the first one to grab that basket of Wurmaisa. So, I had my pick of the Von Misa, all 20 skeins of it, and I bought it. Um, and you want to see it? Because I'm going to show you. Here it is. Here it is. Von Misa. Uh, this is, I believe, the sock. It's in German, so I'm not sure. We had to look it up later. And uh, this color is called Versatschkaninchken. Anyway, I looked it up. It means guinea pig. Uh, so I don't know if this was an experimental color or somebody had a pet guinea pig, but this color is guinea pig. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it was an experiment. Maybe we got the reject skeins at Maryland Sheep and Wool. I don't know, but uh, this is it. And I got to say, it's frankly nothing remarkable. But maybe when I'm knitting it, I'll, I'll you know, I'll change my mind. It does. It feels nice. It feels good. It feels good. Um smells good we'll see but nothing I don't think anything special but I have it <laughs> maybe that's what's important I have it so that was the first purchase within five minutes of being there uh, Nitty D also bought a skein hers is a brown color hers is called indescribable so then we were off to Miss Babs and uh, the line the line the line Here's the thing about Maryland Sheep and Wool. Every year, there's a new hot yarn. The first year that I went, ages ago, it was Koigu. Koigu came down from Canada, and they brought their mill ends, and they sold them by the pound. So you filled your basket up with Koigu, you weighed it, and you paid for it. And it was really, really cheap uh, for Koigu. Um, and then you had all these great Koigu scraps that you can make you know, anything with. Uh, I still have some. I wasn't that creative with my Koigu scraps. Um, then it was Socks That Rock. Anybody who's familiar with Socks That Rock, um, which you all probably are, the only place that sells them at these festivals are The Fold. The Fold is in um, Barn 3, in case uh, you go again next year or go for the first time next year. They're at the very end, and that used to be you had to wait in line to get into the booth, and then you had to wait in line again to pay. And that is now how it is for Miss Babs. So, Miss Babs is now the new hot yarn, and she is hot, hot, hot. She was last year, too, so much so that she has moved from middle of barn, the main barn, to the back of the main barn, and that is because her line is all the way out the door, down around the corner, and, you know, it's just, it's crazy. You have to really want it, I guess, and everybody really wanted it. Um, there was a woman behind us in line with her husband, and he just was like, I don't get it, but all right all right, I'm in for the day. And she was like, have you guys bought this before? Yeah, we bought it before. And can I go back to my old yarn after I've knit this? And I'll, yeah, you can. Um, it's very nice yarn. Um, but it's just the it yarn this year. We'll see what it is next year. Um, so what did I buy? I will show you. Dun, 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 dun. Here it is. Can you see the color? It's like, um, it's called livid. There, that's the best view of the color. Oh, look at that. Ooh, I'm all heavenly in the back here. Anyway, um, that is the color. It's a, it, The color looks a little purple on the screen. It's, it's plum, it's plum. 
got some dust on it. Anyway, that is their uh, Yowza What a Skein yarn, and it is worsted weight, and I believe it's 560 yards. I am correct. It's Superwash Merino. It's 566 yards. It's nice and really squishy. You just want to get it in your hands and squish it, squish it, squish it. So if you watched the last show, I told you that I was going to buy Green Mountain Spinnery for Western work, wicker work. I don't even remember. Again, again, it's Intwist Collective. It's Gudrun Johnson, and I believe it's called Wicker Work. It's a cardigan, and I bought this instead. Um, I did not feel like buying her fingering. I, nothing really jumped out at me that said I need this, especially after I bought the Vulmaisa. So I had a project in my mind. I think it's called Antarchus. Uh, I'll put a link. And that was what I was going to get fingering weight for. So since I had already bought the fingering weight, I wasn't intrigued with the Miss Babs fingering weight. I went with the Yowza. Yowza. And I skipped Green Mountain Spinnery. But that was not the end of my shopping. Let's see what else I bought. Um, on Ravelry, right before Sheep and Wool, a pattern came out. I think it's called Winter Song. And it's a Henley and it has um, a cabled pattern right here with a placket, like a traditional Henley. And I cued it and I thought, that's cute. I didn't know if I was going to actually ever knit it. My cue is very long. But the next day I woke up and the designer had sent me a message saying, hey, I, I sent some free patterns to people who queued it. Thanks. And I thought, wow. So since I had a free pattern, I thought I might as well get some yarn for it. Uh, the size I'm making has 1500 fingering. And I immediately had a vendor in mind because I have bought their fingering before. I've made smaller projects with it. Um, when I showed you my color affection last week it had this company's company it's not really a company this farms yarn in it and uh, i wish i could tell you who they were they're in the main barn and they're right by the door and i forget their name but this is the yarn here it is it is 450 yards of fingering i believe for ten dollars so for $40, you too can have a winter song sweater if I could tell you who I bought it from. But it's nice and soft. It's um, it's a Shetland. Um, it's a heathered, like a lavender purple. Uh, it's got some pretty speckles in it, and I'm excited about it. I think it's a good purchase. So that's the heathered. Uh, and then I, um, I announced I was done buying. I'm done, but I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> I really like socks that rock. And even though they're not the hot yarn of the day anymore, I'm digging in my basket. I bought some because I love it. Look, here's my socks that rock. This is a color called Farmhouse. I don't know what it's going to be. Maybe I'll just hug it. I think I just clunk the microphone. Sorry. But socks that rock can never go wrong. Never, ever. Can never, ever go wrong. And then again, I announced I was done. I'm done. No, I wasn't. So Nitty D was shopping for yarn for a pattern called Ley Lines, which I like, but since I had already gotten yarn for Antarctus, I thought they're similar. I don't need it. But then I was jealous of the yarn she found. Uh, hers is a green, green color and mine is olive. Look how pretty that is. Look how pretty. It's called Persimmon from Persimmon Tree Farm. It is so soft, I can't even begin to tell you how soft it is. I'm so happy, I'm so happy with it. And that was my last purchase. Ta-da! So that ends my purchases from Maryland Sheep and Wool. And now I'm going to stop the video and I'm gonna show you some photographs and I'm gonna try and do a little voiceover. I haven't done that yet, so we'll see if I can get it done. And then I will meet you back here. What's a sheep and wool festival without a ba? Here we are with our wool mysa, bull mysa purchases. And this gentleman was nice enough to, to entertain us while we stood in line for Miss Babs. What are you in line for? How long is the line? Really, really long. Look at this line. Now, if she had been smart, she could have put yarn all along here. So we could have shopped while we stood in line. <laughs> or we would have brought stuff to sell. 
Yeah. And then we would have yeah. like drinks. What do you we buy? could have made. I'm buying these two pretty skeins. It's going to be for the cameo show. I really like it. This is my colors these days. You're really making a movie? Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, and it's called Livid. Uh, here it is. Here's the Livid. Livid. And that is. This one's hot shot. This one's yummy. And it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. So, my video taking skills with the iPhone aren't so great. I didn't realize that you can't hold the thing horizontal. Anyway, here are a few more pictures of sheep because it is a sheep and wool festival. I wish I had gotten this guy going a big bah. And what's a sheep and wool festival without a little ice cream? The ice cream is fresh and frozen and cold, and we always get it dipped in peanut butter. There isn't just yarn at the festival. There's all kinds of things. This is one of my favorite vendors. It's kind of a junk shop, I guess. Uh, they have a lot of um, spoons and forks bent into crazy shapes, and they have all these spindles. It's awesome. This year, yarn bombing was really big. I don't know who had to clean it up, but it was pretty cool. It was all over the place. Here's a shot of the fair. Lots of people, lots of fun. And now this is the sheep dog exhibition. That dog is in charge. Don't be fooled. There may be a lot of sheep and one dog, but the dog is boss, as it should be. Um, anyway, they do this about three times a day, and I always try and catch it once. Here are Christina's purchases, pretty, pretty. Um, a lot of the same vendors that I've already showed you. Now here are my purchases, yay! I'm so happy with all of them. On the way home, what would Maryland be if we didn't stop for crabs? We stopped at Woody's Crab Shack, or maybe Crab House, and it was awesome. I was very happy. Here I am with my little friend, the crab. Yay, that's it for sheep. So that's it for Sheep and Wool 2015. I hope you enjoyed our little trip. Even though um, I was a woeful videographer, uh, I took other video, but my camera was turned the wrong way. Didn't know, now I know. Uh, didn't know you couldn't put the pictures in vertically in iMovie either, but now I know. Sorry you couldn't see my little crab. He's like this. I take the same picture every year. We stop at the same restaurant every year. Anyway, um, next week, uh, I hope I finish Earth. I am on the last clue, the cow that I've been talking about for the past three weeks. Uh, I will have started something else. Don't know what yet. And hopefully I'll be back to Sophie. And I can show you some Sophie progress. So that's it. Have a good yarny week.